Welcome everyone to this week's episode of Unrooted Baseball Edition. My guest for this week's show is none other than senior outfielder on the baseball team, Reed Keenly. Reed, thanks for joining me on the yeah, show. Anytime, thanks for having me. Hey, anytime. I'm really glad you could make it. Let's start with getting to know you a little bit better. You came to Menlo last year after transferring from Mission College, and you started all but two games in your first year in Navy and White. You're listed as a utility player on the roster, but I've only seen you play outfield. Is that where you prefer to be? Um, I don't really have a preference to be honest with you. I just kind of, I kind of go with the flow out there. Wherever they need me, I go. Um, it's kind of a blessing to be able to play more than one position. Um, outfield, it's fun. I like it. Uh, it's a little less, a little less uh, worry, I guess you can say, than playing infield. There's not as much you have to focus on and worry about, so you can kind of just hang out there and think think through the game and just be in the right spot at the right time. And that's all you got to do. So where else can you play? Uh, it's probably easier for me to tell you where I can't play. It's a shorter <laughs> list. Where I cannot play, pitcher, catcher, and first base. All right. So there's no chance that we see you play all nine positions on senior day. Not happening? That, that's a question for the, the, the skipper. <laughs> I should have asked him. I would, I would like to try. That would be fun. But. Well, that would have been great. Hey, yeah. we'll get him back on the show and we'll okay, see what he says go. about that. Hey, you're one of the best defenders on the team, and you've played both corner outfield spots here at Menlo. How much pride do you take in defense? Oh, I love defense. It's, it's one, of, one of my favorite parts of the game. Um, it's, it's always been something that I, I, I take a lot of pride in. I work hard in to, to be as best I can be, and it, you know, it comes with just, just practice reps and just taking practice to heart and not just kind of going through the motions. It's one of my favorite feelings to, you know, save a pitcher by making a diving catch or robbing a home run and taking, taking all the momentum back away from that other team. So it's, I, I really enjoy making good plays on defense. Now you and your fall team won the Innovation Challenge, and for those of you that's, that don't know, that's part of the Bird Cup, which we can go into more detail later on if necessary. Uh, you guys built a warning track for Cartan Field, which was kind of like the first part of the renovation process that's going on right now. What was that process like, and what was your role in its completion? Oh, it was, it was such a good idea <laughs> in our heads, as me and Dean were talking about it uh, as the captains of of the fall team and uh, it sounded so much easier when we were just talking about it and it ended up being so much harder than we anticipated we, we were worried for a second that we weren't gonna actually complete it on time um, but the role the role I had it was, it was pretty much me and Dean that uh, were in charge of orchestrating that and you know getting all the materials um, luckily for us Dean's dad had a, a sod remover so that made the manual labor a little less intensive but just a little bit yeah hauling it all away was a pain um and then getting the dirt we just or the the clay we got from linkso garden materials up the road and uh, they were easy to deal with and then it was just a matter of getting some of our teammates out there when they didn't want to be out there to help us one remove grass and two fill in dirt and then make it all nice and smooth now, who was your competition? Remind me again of, of who it was. Uh, it was it was there was four teams in the fall, and there was, it was so it was my me and Dean's team, and then um, Q and Chance. We were all kind of paired together, and then it was uh, Thomas Cox and Eddie Sanchez and Mac Boot and Jason Alexander's teams. So they were in the North Division, and they were against us in the South, and they were supposed to put up cameras with some That's right. yeah with some some software to be able to analyze you know your swing during a game that they were going to be kind of up on the, the the corners of the backstop there and uh, i mean i haven't seen them yet but yeah i remember the, looking forward uh, to them whenever I, they come i remember being a part of the judging panel for that and part of the criteria was that it had to be a field renovation exactly. project which of course the camera system was not so yeah and it was it was one of those things where we didn't really know what to do because we had heard they were going to do all these renovations and so we were just like ah you know what let's just kind of go for it and if they if they tear it down in a month and put a better one up, like so be it. At least hopefully we win the challenge. So and that you ended up did. working out. And that you did. Yes. Uh, you are one of the most adamant players on this team when it comes to Mustache March. For those of you who don't know what Mustache March is, you grow a mustache in the month of in the month of March. It's pretty simple. Are there any friendly wagers amongst teammates when March rolls around? I wouldn't say there's any wagers. I'd say there's some expectations. <laughs> uh, if you can grow facial hair, you better have a mustache. Um, a lot of people are very superstitious about it. Um, I know, I know Skip is. He, 
he refused to grow one last year because the year before they had a bad month of March, I guess, when he had a mustache. Mm -hmm. So a lot of players will, you know, say like, oh, I didn't hit well last March, so I'm not going to grow a mustache this March. But it's kind of a thing just to build camaraderie and, and you know, more, more brotherhood and a sense of connection on the team. And it's just it's fun to see everyone with the mustache, you know. Mine's not coming in yet. Uh, I started it this month. It takes me a while. There we go. And then I'll, you know, I'll dye it up for you guys again. And oh, perfect. Yeah, get it, get it nice and. We're expecting flashy. something really nice by March 31st. Uh, it'll, so be here. it'll be here. It'll be here. All right, good. Uh, the weekend series against Shepherd University was wildly successful, to say the least, for you guys. You outscored Shepherd 43 to two over a four-game series. Obviously, everything was working, but what did you notice from the bunch that stood out? Uh, I mean, based on that that score you just threw out, forty three to two, is that what it was? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, one thing that you can pick out of that, and what, that I noticed compared to our first weekend, um, was our pitchers were a lot more competitive in the strike zone. Um, they limited the number of free passes they gave out, and we played really solid defense behind them. So they, we were kind of the pitchers were attacking their hitters and forcing contact, and we were making plays behind them, and we were just able to keep them keep them from scoring runs, so it was a good weekend. Yeah, you make a good point because the pitching staff on this year's team looks to be as deep as any pitching staff in recent Menlo history. As a hitter, what is it like to watch those pitchers on the team, and, and what do you see from them that makes them so successful? Uh, they're just, they're all super competitive, even within themselves. Um, I'm just super happy that they're on my team and I don't have to yeah. face them every weekend or every other weekend. Um, but yeah, they, they um, Jake took over the, the pitching coach kind of duties this year and you can tell they've been a lot more focused on um, some of the things they do in practice and the mentality they take to the field when they're even in conditions like this when it's raining outside that they still are out there getting their conditioning and getting their work in um, I know they had like a team meeting a team pitchers meeting last night to go over Biola's hitters for this week so there's there's a good sense of of competitive nature there that it starts with Jake I believe yeah, now the first win of that series against Simpson, or, uh, excuse me, Shepherd University, was the 100th of head coach Jake McKinley's career here at Menlo, which puts him now he's just about nine wins behind the all-time record here in the program. What's it like being a player for Coach Jake? Oh, it's great, and you know, once again, I just want to say congratulations, Jake, on that. Um, I didn't even know that was a thing until after the so the doubleheader game, the second game, Mac came running up to me, who was I think he was on the show last week. He came running up to me, he's like, dude, we gotta get we gotta get the water, the water jug, we gotta throw it on him. I was like, what are you talking about? We like we won two games, that's what we're supposed to do, you know? And he he, he therefore explained it to me, you know, hey, that was hundred wins and hundred and one wins. And uh, so that that's how I found out about it. But it's it's really great to play in a program under under Jake. He he's really a player's coach. Um, you know, he's he's really personable guy and it's he's easy to get along with and talk to you about anything baseball or non-baseball related so it's really good to have have that kind of a, a leader and mentor uh, leading our team yeah now you guys already have 13 home runs in seven games which is about as statistically good as last year's team where you guys hit like 80 home runs over the course of the season one of the top numbers in the entire nation uh who is the best to watch in batting practice <sighs> there's there's a lot obviously uh you said 13 home runs that's not all from one guy you know our offense puts the barrel on the ball and good things happen. But if I had to pick out one person, I'd say uh, Julian Gerard. I think he's hitting like 500 right now. It's Something like kind that. of unreal. Um, three or four home runs, if I'm not mistaken. And each, each round of batting practice, it's loud contact after loud contact. And it's just a matter of how far over the fence it's gonna go. Not when, it's how far. So it's pretty impressive to watch. Now, how often are you getting the ball over the fence in batting practice? Uh, not quite as often as him, <laughs> but I get my fair share, you know. Uh, on a good day, out of the 15 pitches, I might get, might get eight. He on a bad day, he might get eight. So it's, that's that's the comparison for you there. Well, uh, you got one of the 13 home runs on the year yeah. already, so you're contributing to that total. I, yeah, hopefully we'll have some more this weekend. <laughs> yeah, hopefully. Uh, speaking of this weekend, you guys begin conference play. You're traveling down to Biola on the road. Uh, they were a pesky team last year, and they gave you the first loss in the conference tournament uh, in May of 2016. What's the mindset going into this series, and, and how tough do you expect them to be this year? Uh, yeah, we, I mean, we expect them to be good again. They played us, they played us hard last year, um, and we were actually down there on their senior day, I believe, last year. And they only had, you know, a handful of seniors. So that, that should, tells us that, you know, they're returning a lot of guys that were on the team last year. So we can kind of expect more of the same um, kind of pesky attitudes. And, that, you know, they're going to compete. They're not going to just 
roll over and say, oh, Menlo's here, they're gonna, oh, cool, Menlo's here, they're, you know, they're licking their chops to play us, and as we are for them, start conference. Uh, yeah, so we'll, we'll go out and take care of business and just treat it like another game. There you go. All right, let's transition into the final segment of the show. It is called Brownie Bites. Reed, I'm going to ask you three rapid fire random questions. Answer them as completely as you can. Are you ready? Let's, let's do it. All right, question number one. You're from Gilroy, California. Mm -hmm. So I got to ask you, what is your favorite garlic related food? The non-normal garlic related food would be uh, garlic flavored ice cream. They have it every year at the, the Gilroy Garlic Festival. Uh, Gilroy is famous for its garlic. That's why we have Garlic Festival. I believe we're still the garlic capital of the world. There was a couple years there where there was some little town in Japan, I think, that took <laughs> us over. But I think we got the title back. And uh, there's a little garlic shop out off the highway out there in the countryside that serves it. So that's usually a big hit with people. Question number two, who has the best hair? You, Mac Boone, or someone else? Well, definitely me. You know, I, you know I started this trend. Of course. Um, Max, Mac, he... He's got good hair. I'm not taking that away from him. Um, but other than me, I'd, I'd have to say I'd have to say Dalton Maxwell's got some pretty good hair. He's getting there with it. He's got some pretty good hair. It's it's definitely longer than Max. Yeah. A little thicker than Max. Uh, Max is kind of stringy and scraggly. Looks good. He pulls it off because he's kind of skinny and scraggly. Yeah. You know. But you know, just kidding, Mac. I love you, man. <laughs> um, but yeah, there's there's some good. Heads of lettuce out there, yeah. to say the least. And Dalton's got the redhead look going for he him, does. too. So that's unique amongst them. Exactly, you know. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately, we were not blessed to see Reed's hair down today during this I interview. Mean, I can, can, can see. I can go, oh, hey, if you want to. If you want to. I mean, it's for them, honestly. All right, here, we go. here you guys go. It's a little, <laughs> little messy today, you know. But it's not it's not quite game hair. It's usually nice and greasy for the games. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. But you know, this is what this is what I live with on a daily basis. So there you go, folks. Best hair on the team right there, Reed Keenly. Question number three. You hit an inside the park home run last year, mm -hmm. which led to one of my favorite calls of all time. Forget <laughs> get out of here baseball, stay in the yard baseball. <laughs> which player on the team would you not want on the bases if you hit an inside the park home run? Which player would I not want? So not want in front of me. Yes. Let's see. Who's on? Who do you not want on first base? Ah, uh, that's tough. That's tough. Um, I would have definitely had an answer for you last year. <laughs> uh, this year, I'd probably have to say I'd probably have to say Julian. He's he doesn't move too fast since he usually hits the ball over the fence himself. <laughs> True. Um, but yeah, I, I feel like. I wouldn't make it all the way around because he'd probably stop at third, <laughs> or I'd catch him. And Dane's make not him go. giving him the wave around. He would if I was right behind him, just because <laughs> I'm already there. But yeah, if that would be the guy. All right, Reed, appreciate it. Thanks yeah, for anytime. joining me. Appreciate it. And that'll do it here for week three of Unrooted Baseball Edition. Fans, don't forget that baseball's on the road this weekend. They travel down to Biola. The details on that three-game conference series are still being hammered out, but as it stands right now, it looks like two Friday morning games on a doubleheader starting at about 8 a.m., so have fun Whew. sleeping. All right. You're going to be uh, really tired, I think, Friday it's the first morning. first I've heard of it, so thanks. Yeah, well, yeah. you're welcome. Appreciate this. I got 8 a.m. on Friday, and and then the Saturday, or excuse me, that's 8 a.m. Thursday, not Friday. Tomorrow's Thursday. Because tomorrow's Thursday, yeah. so it would be 8 a.m. Friday. You know what? Disregard that. <laughs> 8 a.m. on Friday, doubleheader. Saturday will be a single game, and the time on that one has not yet been determined. So stay tuned to MenloAthletics.com, and you will find all the information on the three-game series as Menlo kicks off Golden State Athletic Conference play. Well, we'll invite you to stick around for next week's show. And next week, Reed Keenly will be selecting the interviewee, so you won't want to miss who he decides to throw under the bus with next week's show. I'm Brian Brown. Thanks so much for tuning in, and we'll see you next week.